I think it's time that we finally unlock Interstellar. Currently, I am 10 weapons priceless away from unlocking Interstellar, and with Black Ops 6 right on the horizon, I think we should probably go ahead and unlock it before we get into a whole nother game's life cycle, because this one's coming to an end pretty soon. And obviously, I'm getting to this late. There's been so many other people to unlock this, like, probably before even season one started. And honestly, I don't even know why I haven't really stuck to multiplayer very much this game, even though I've enjoyed a lot of the content for it, and I feel like Sledgehammer's done a great job with it this year. But I do have a few theories. Is this our first priceless of the day? Let's go. 10 to go. But one of my theories is, is that this game's camo challenges really aren't that difficult. Like, there's a few that'll give you trouble here and there. And, you know, I'll tend to struggle with any camo challenge at some point. So I always just felt like, oh, I can go and unlock it whenever. And it's like, I got so much time to get it done. It's like uh, one of those things where I just start putting it off and putting it off until uh, we're, we're coming to the deadline here. You know, assignment is due. So it's either now or never. And I'm going to go ahead and pick now. Another reason is, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more valid is a little bit of uh, choice paralysis. It's like, uh, you know, you go on Netflix, you go on YouTube or whatever, and you're like, oh, there's nothing to watch when there's literally like millions of things to watch. But it's more like, oh, I got all these camos to do. I don't even know where to start. So then I just don't. And maybe the realest reason out of them all why I haven't gotten it done yet is because we haven't been able to do our favorite segment while we're grinding camos in multiplayer. And that's the Gamer Guy Does Sports Talk segment. Because there hasn't been any Lions football to talk about, but you know, the preseason just started. We're like two weeks into it now. And the Lions are coming off of a NSC Championship game where uh, they were two quarters away from making the Super Bowl and a very uh, heartbreaking meltdown against the 49ers. But we, we were very close. And I got a lot of hope going into this next season, which could be a dangerous thing. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be a happy and optimistic Lions fan for, you know, one of the first times in my life, at least at the start of a season. Last season, we're coming in optimistic because we finished strong, even though we didn't make it to the playoffs or anything the season before last. And now it seems like we could be a real contender, but I do have like a few question marks that I feel like kind of need to be addressed. Like right now, I don't really think we have anything intact if uh, Goff ends up going down. Because it doesn't look like Nate Sudfeld is like a real true number two quarterback, like a, a backup we can rely on. I'm sure he's you know great for helping Goff prepare for you know each week. But I don't know how confident I am in him coming in and like helping us win a game when we need it. And then we do have Hendon Hooker, somebody we drafted that came out of college injured and was a very good quarterback in college, but I still don't think he's fully ready yet at the NFL level, not that I'm like a talent evaluator or anything, but he did miss all last season just getting ready, you know, getting healthy, and he just saw his like first NFL action in the, the first two preseason games. The first one, he looked all right and then ended up getting hurt. And then in the second one, he played pretty well, but still it's, uh, I, I don't know. I, I want, I'm very optimistic with, with Hooker. I think eventually he can be very good, but I don't know. I'm not very optimistic if like Hooker has to come in and, you know, take the reins of the team. I'm more optimistic in him than Sudfeld, and I think he can be very good in the future, but I don't know like how it would go right now if something were to happen. But hopefully we won't have to worry about that. Hopefully Goff can stay healthy, not like he's had injury issues in the past, but I am very uh, superstitious. So let's change the topic a bit. Our, our actual concern is, uh, I don't know who our like third receiver is. Like, yeah, we have Amon Ra and we have Sam Laporta, which are two great targets. And then JMO is still coming into his own. He, he actually looked really good during the NFC Championship game and slowly throughout the season was doing better. But I don't think he's like solidified himself as like the number two receiver, at least not like an uh, insanely solid one. Even though I do believe in him and think he has like insane potential, especially like big play potential. But after that, there's just no real receiver standing out that's gonna be receiver three. Like it may be Khalif Raymond. I think he's probably like got that spot locked down at the moment. And I think one of our younger receivers, another Williams, I don't know his first name. I only saw him a little bit in our last preseason game. Looked pretty decent. Looks like he has a fair shot at making the roster. But I really don't think that we should have let Josh Reynolds walk because I don't 
think he's doing too well over in Denver. At least like he's kind of buried on the, the depth chart there. When he was really solid for us last year. I know a lot of people want to shit out of him for the, the MC Championship game and those drops. But prior to that game, he was like one of the most clutch players on our offense. It was like for the first few weeks of the season, every catch he had was for at least over 10 yards for a first down or for like some sort of clutch play when we needed it. And I think it's pretty disingenuous to have like put all the blame on the NFC Championship loss on him. Like there was plenty of mistakes made across the board. We we had like the, the ball bounce off of Vildor's helmet. We had Jameer fumble. It, we really weren't clicking at all in the second half of that game. I think the only player to really show that they were still like on it was Jamo. So maybe once, uh you know, the preseason cuts start happening, maybe somebody will get freed up or uh, we'll end up trading somebody on the roster bubble to get more depth at receiver. But I feel like our front office has given us like no reason not to trust them in their uh, judgment when it comes to the talent they have on the roster. And I'm just excited for next season. I'm excited and, and a bit nervous because now we have uh, real expectations going in. A lot of the time it's just like, oh, uh, the Lions are playing this season. It'd be nice if they did well. And it's like, oh, we actually did decent. What, what, what are we gonna do next year? Oh shit, we made it to the NFC Championship game. We have a real shot at this thing. And let's just see if they keep that up. I just want to see the Lions win a Super Bowl once in my lifetime. Just one time. That's all I asked for. But that concludes our Gamer Guy Does Sports Talk segment for this video. Unless I, you know, think of anything else. But I don't think it would have been a, a multiplayer camo grinding video if I didn't talk about it. And coming into BO6, I will try to be a bit more frequent with the multiplayer videos. I, I feel like I'm also going to be paralyzed by choice in BO6. Because we're going to have like round based zombies again. Like real round based zombies for the first time in forever. There's going to be two brand new maps to play you know easter eggs to hunt for zombies camos to grind for i'm gonna try to balance it all out but you guys know how i get i, I get focused on one thing and end up just working towards that and then some things just get put on the back burner for a little too long but I'll, I'll try to be better about it. I promise. I've also been thinking about what the camo challenges are going to look like in BO6. Because the last two years, the camo challenges have been very easy in Modern Warfare 2 and 3, where it's like very little numbers compared to what we've seen in the past. Like, you know, getting like 20 headshot kills, you know, 50 base kills for the weapon and other random challenges like sprinkled in throughout. But with Treyarch being the ones to head the next game and, you know, thinking back to Cold War's camo challenges, I really hope we don't don't have to do the kills behind cover again because that was one of the most frustrating challenges to get done because it all relied on what somebody else was doing in the game and it felt like every single time i was trying to go for those kills nobody wanted to go behind cover or you know what it decided the definition of cover was was different than my definition of cover and it seemed like it just wouldn't count sometimes but that seems like nothing compared to doing some of the launcher challenges in Cold War. Like if we have to do 50 ground streaks again, I might actually lose it. Especially if we don't have some sort of like fire team or like ground war mode where there's going to be a lot of people like in vehicles and stuff to make it easy. Because in Cold War, if you went for DM Ultra, you'll remember going for those ground streaks and just how tedious it was to get done. Because you had to wait for somebody to either get an RCXD or to get a sentry gun and you had to go over to it and take it out. With the RCXD, you only have such a limited amount of time to take it out before it blows itself up. And then with a the sentry gun, it took sometimes two to three rockets, depending on what launcher you're using to even get rid of it. And you had to be the first one to get to it and be the one to actually take it out for the challenge. So you could have went ahead and threw two rockets into that sentry turret, but someone else comes along and, you know, takes it out with their own rocket launcher or like knifes it or just melees it to death or even shoots it until it's gone. Then guess what? You don't get that, that progress. And then it just takes forever to get done. And if they bring back the M79 again and we're going to have to go for long shots with it, I'm going to lose my mind because I know their flak jacket's going to be crazy and it's only going to be possible to do in hardcore. And even then, you're going to have to hit somebody twice with it or like, you know, warm them up with a nade. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, all the camo challenges need to be easy. I, I want to be able to get this camo super fast. Obviously, that's not the case with this game because the camos are super easy and I'm still working on it. And honestly, I would prefer for the challenges to be a bit harder because I, I like the accessibility that this game has given the mastery camos to and it's opened up a lot more people 
to actually grinding and going for a mastery camo. But I also kind of like the exclusivity of getting a mastery camo. Like it feels like you have to put in that work to get it and not just like the time. I would just prefer that there's some camo challenges out there that are maybe reworked to be something a little less frustrating. Like if they add something in, like you need to get like revenge kills with a certain weapon. Like you literally have to go out there and die by a certain person and then come back and get them before they get killed. Like that would be an insane challenge. Like I just would prefer to limit it more to skill and in not so much on what somebody else is doing. Because those kills behind cover and trying to get kills while enemies got flak jacket on are, are just insane to do and extremely frustrating. Like, I really enjoyed the difficulty of Modern for 2019's grind, like going for Damascus. Because like when you saw someone with Damascus, you're like, oh, they put in the work to get that. And back then I was complaining about mounted kills, but I would love to have mounted kills over kills behind cover or anything that feels more RNG based and not more based on if I have the skill to pull it off. Like bring back more challenges where it's like, you know, get five kills without dying. Get, you know, however many kills without dying. Get this many headshots. I'll take that all day. But at the end of the day, I trust Treyarch with making a, a good COD game. And I think we're going to be in for a good year. And also, I really hope that they don't forget about aftermarket parts. I hope this is not one and done thing in COD where it's only going to be in this game and we don't see it again. I think it's been a really fun way to like spice up some guns, you know, bring back some fan favorite guns. Like I just got killed with the Model 1887s right there. And it also, you know, gives you a, a better way to go and revisit a gun. Like maybe you don't like the, the Lockwood Mark II and you thought it was like a shit gun, but now it's got a, the Model 1887 attachment and now it's your favorite gun. And on top of that, a lot of those aftermarket part attachments, they limit the other attachments that you can do. So it could be a good way to add in guns like that, but with a balance. I just think it was like a really cool concept to add to the game. And it's been really fun going in and trying out all the aftermarket parts and seeing like how different they can make a gun just by by creating a conversion kit. And I think the absolute best part about it was that we're getting one weekly. Like every Wednesday, we were getting a new aftermarket part. Oh, and speaking of new, there's another new priceless camo. Nine to go. I just think that we've been a bit spoiled with this game with like damn near weekly events, weekly camos, just something going on every week. We've had like an insane amount of content for this game and multi for multiplayer specifically. And I hope Treyarch can uh, keep up that kind of like ADHD amount of content. And I was begging for mounted kill challenges and now I got them. I have to get mounted long shots with this gun and I'm not really able to get them. I don't even know if this is long enough for a long shot. Nope. All right, we have to lobby shop. I would be able to do this on some more maps if uh, the deployable cover still existed. Because that's what I did in every other game that I needed like long shot kills for, mounted or not. I would just set one of them bad boys down and just lean on it. But I think it was removed because of an exploit and they just haven't added it back in. It's just gone. I changed my mind. Remove mounted kills. I'm bored. I just have to wait at this very niche angle for what seems like forever for one person to peek it. And maybe I'll get the long shot for it. Or somebody will take the kill. Fuck you. I'm going back to lobby shopping. Finally, we got rust. Now, even with the right map, I can't get to a spot where I can hit a mounted long shot. Oh, wait, hold on. Now we're getting it. Stay over there. This is perfect. Oh, shit. Oh, rank 1000. Are we done? Nope. Got my hopes up for nothing. No, I wasn't done yet. I need the map. Come back. Wait, can I just use a bipod? Is it that easy? And am I that dumb? I think the answer to both those questions is uh, yes. I am and it is. There we go. Now give me camo, please. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Another priceless down. Now we can play the game as intended by jumping around. I need kills while in midair. There's nobody on the other team. There's nobody. Why am I being fucked with so hard? Oh, I'm a little rabbit. You can't stop me. They call me J Bunny. I'm literally just spamming space whenever I shoot. And there we go. It works perfectly. Oh, what the fuck? I don't think I've ever seen this version of DOS House. Kind of insane. But it being called DOS Gross ain't wrong. Now we just need to get some hipfire kills while sliding. Shouldn't be too difficult. Ugh. And the floor sounds all wet. It's all squishy. It's all like good pussy. This is also a weird-ass challenge. 
don't know if I like this. It just feels unnatural to play like this. Ooh, are we done? I feel like we've gotten enough. There's a level up. There's a week three challenge. And there's a week four challenge. And there's a UAV. And there's priceless. Okay. On to headshots while moving. So now I'm sure I'll be getting like 70 kills and I'll be body shots. That's just how these things go. No way. None of those were headshots. Come on. What? There we go. Finally. Oh, let's go. We're getting closer. We're at like 31 out of 30. I haven't even mentioned the camo curse this whole video, but now the cat's out of the bag. It's happening. I need to get these five kills without dying 10 times, and I've only been able to do it like once or twice. Yeah, twice. It had to hit at some point. Oh, there we go. Finally. Has the curse been lifted? Let me if I can get a nice 10 kill here. Almost. There we go. Go back. Ooh. Can we go for a 15? Oh, there we go. That's a nice little 15er. Dr. Disrespect be like. Oh, let's go. Keep it going. More. Nice little 10 again. Ooh. I am running out of ammo, though. I don't think I have scavenger on this class. So, unfortunately, this creek's going to have to come to an end at some point. But not now. At least we got a ruthless out of it. Oh, and we were one away. Never mind. The curse is back. Come on, three, two more. Oh, I was on four and eight and eight. Three. Oh, mother fuck. Come on. Let's go. One more. There it is. Give me priceless. Thank you. We're so close to being done. We need 10 kills while being out of the enemy's line of sight. Nobody look at me. If we get one good flank, we might be able to knock them all out. Another merciless. When did I start going on streaks? I actually might have a positive KD by the time this thing's done. Rank up, did I get it? Yes, sir. We're flying through these. Let's press double kills. That ain't no thing. Go ahead and add another priceless down. Let's go, dude. Two more. I guess we're staying with suppressors because now we need suppressed headshots. There we go. I'm glad we get to hop on meat at least one more time while getting interstellar. You know, I love to hop and slide around on it. Let's go. That's a priceless meat right there. A priceless on meat. We got one more to do. After 10 double kills while in tax stance, we will have Interstellar. We are just knocking at the door of Interstellar. I just really need the camo curse to leave me alone just for a little bit. And then I'm, I'm done. I'm done till next game. And you can go crazy next game. Or, or please don't. I will regret saying that. There we go. Keep it coming. I need more. Keep feeding me. I think our SBMM is catching up to us because we are getting with some people that know how to spawn trap. You know, we actually need to be in this lobby. We get a fresh game on Cell Ship. This is just a perfect place to end the interstellar grind on the best camo grinding map in the game. Let's just uh, make sure we get our stuff done, though. Come on. Keep the double kills coming, please. We're almost there. We are so close. It's actually insane. Come on. Where, where's everybody standing together at? 
Nowhere. I just took out a teammate thinking I could get a double kill from that. We're actually just edging Interstellar. We are so close to unlocking it, but we're so far away at the same time. This is the most spread out I've ever seen a team on shipment ever in my life. Nobody's near each other. Okay, maybe we're, we're going from being edged to being cucked. Please. There we go. Have to complain a little bit. I forgot. That's the cheat code. We're literally one double kill away. One single double kill away. Oh, there it is. That should be interstellar. Rank up. Show me. There's priceless. Show me interstellar. Let's go. Oh, we finally did it. Let's get out of here. Now, are my eyes deceiving me? Do we actually get this camo? Let's go, dude. That looks terrible on this blueprint, but we got it. Can't take that away from me. And what are our stats looking like? I don't think I got a single kill past when we got Interstellar. So two days, 15 hours and eight minutes total on multiplayer. And all that time has been spending getting Interstellar. Average 28 kills a game, 612 score per minute. We did go positive with a 1.01 KD ratio with just a little over 100 kills than deaths. We are negative in the, in the win category though. And what was the weapon that we used the most? So the Morse took us the longest with the striker being the second longest and that just happened. What about our best KD ratio weapon? Kazdoff and two marks or a marks rifle and a battle rifle. <sighs> wow, what a journey. Let's actually go take a peek at our camo. Wow, ain't she a beaut. What a great looking mastery camo. This is such a great idea for one. It is an amazing texture, great colors on it. It's just such a nice mastery camo. I should have got it unlocked way sooner, but better late than never, I guess. Oh, and it looks so good on a sniper. Are you kidding me? God damn. This, this almost reminds me of like Counter-Strike, one of the Doppler phases, the, the pink version. It just looks so good. And I still don't have every single weapon interstellar. We still got a little bit more to do, but at least we can see it on a few weapons. What a good looking camo. Well, it may be eight months later, but we did it. We finally went and got interstellar done. The road to interstellar has now reached its end and I should have gotten it done way sooner. Hopefully when BO6 rolls around, I'll be able to swap between modes a little bit more consistently and we will get our mastery camo in that game done a lot faster than we did here but i need you guys to keep me on it that way we can get it done but with that i'm gonna go ahead and end it here thank you guys for watching i truly appreciate our love and support and i will see you in the next one later